Hey, I'm Bakers and Bake Off fans. Guess what? 12 new people in that tent, one new haircut, and there's something about Mr. Paul Hollywood I just can't put my finger on. That can only mean one thing. The Great British Bake Off is back, and so are the Bake With Jack video diaries. Roll it. <laughs> Like that? Yeah, we got a theme tune because it's 2018 and that's just how we roll. A little touch of class to the Bake With Jack studios. But hey, welcome back to the Bake Off Video Diaries. I am well excited, as I am every single year, about the Bake Off. I don't know if you remember last year, maybe you weren't even here, maybe you're a new subscriber and you didn't even watch last year. Not very many people did but you know what I was watching them the other day just to see how I got on and it wasn't too bad the year before that however horrendous so here we are back again with another series of the Great British Bake Off and it's series nine is what we're going to be talking about right so if you are from across the pond then you don't get the new series for like what seven years or something don't watch this because then you might remember it and then in seven years time I would already ruined it for you now I'm going to try my best to get this video out every single week and it might happen directly after the Bake Off and it might happen a few days later but hey I'm not going to put any pressure on myself because I already do my weekly bread tip of the week so hey let's just take it easy but I reckon you'll get one every single week and if you don't just uh, go easy on me okay. I loved the Bake Off the other day it was properly wicked if you watched it too I hope you're there with me because there's 12 proper characters in that tent now actually there's 11, but there was 12. So I'm not gonna talk about every single one of them exactly the same as last time because we're gonna go on for ages and ages and ages. I wanna pick out my little highlights and let you know who I've got my beady eyes on this year. Because last year, I don't know if you remember rightly, but you know what? I actually got my beady eyes on some people and they made it all the way to the final. And I think I even predicted the winner. I might have done, I can't remember. So season nine, episode one, and it's biscuit week straight off the bat. Last week, last year, they did sandwich biscuits. This year, just biscuits, regional biscuits from regions of the UK. All identical shapes and sizes, standard bake-off practice. Now, a lot of people in this first round, in round number one, uh, decided to do shortbread biscuits, and I thought that was really interesting because a shortbread biscuit is a real telltale sign I think of if someone knows their stuff or not right because a shortbread biscuit is supposed to be short that means it breaks really easily melt in the mouth some people say it just crumbles on your tongue and it's absolutely wonderful and delicious however it still holds its shape right and the whole idea with a shortbread biscuit is a little bit of like when you're making pastry you got to keep it short which means you got to try your best not to overwork the mixture not to develop the gluten it's totally the opposite of when you're making bread we do everything when we make bread to develop the gluten and when you're making shortbread you do everything you can not to develop the gluten to keep it snappable and breakable and short that's why it's called short bread and that's why I believe it's a telltale sign whether someone's got skills or not because by default if you know the concept of a short bread you can make a good short bread now what I love about the Bake Off is reading in between the lines, yes? Catching little glimpses of people doing something and you can tell whether they got moves or not. Whether they know what they're doing or not. Or whether they just randomly got there because they had a curly moustache. All jokes aside, there are a few people that shone brightly like the stars in the night sky and a few people that are just a little bit, come on, a little bit ropey. A little bit ropey straight off the bat on round one. Here's my top highlights from round one of Biscuit Week. Ready? Kim Joy, your biscuit with the flour on top. Really, really nice. My wife clocked that and thought that looks lovely and the judges agreed. Anthony, chili mango jammy dodgers. Seriously? That guy absolutely smashed it. I was looking at them thinking, eh, I'm not too sure about that, but they absolutely loved the flavour. Imelda, I clocked her straight away. She had skills straight off the bat. Did you see that little thing she done with the paintbrush? Someone gets a paintbrush and dusts coconut off of half of a biscuit. You think, hold on, she knows what she's doing. They looked perfect and she did really, really well. Manon, French, hazelnut shortbread clotted cream biscuit was perfect. Absolutely identical. She lined them up around the plate. They were absolutely wonderful. They looked absolutely perfect. Bryony from Bristol. 
uh, great biscuits too. I'm not going to go in depth about the people and criticise the people who I think fluffed it because that would not be cool at this stage. However, I do want a special mention for Terry because Terry was drawing pictures of sheep with chocolate and the idea was wicked. Being an artist, you think, oh, okay, cool, cool. The idea was great, but didn't quite pull it off at the end. Couldn't get it done in time. Nothing set. Real, real shame. Let's move on to the technical. You know what, actually, before we venture into the technical, at this point, just after round number one, I wrote down the names of three people. I put on my piece of paper, eyes on, and then I wrote three people's names up there who I thought had skills from the beginning. Those three people were Manon, right? Imelda, and Bristol Bryony. There was one person I put a question mark up against, and that was Ruby, because Ruby's got moves. However, she fluffed a biscuit round. They were too dry. They did not like them one bit, which is a shame. Let's go on. The technical challenge in week number one was wagon wheels or for man on wheelie wagons. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's never going to end, is it? Which involves making two different biscuits and putting marshmallow and jam in between, covering the whole thing in chocolate. There was something about putting chocolate on one side of it. I didn't really get that bit, but the whole thing was covered in chocolate nicely and set up lovely. The trick is not to make the marshmallow too runny, else it runs away, and not to make it too rubbery, else it is too rubbery. So already at this point in the competition, a couple of people rose to the top, to the pinnacle in round number one, and then crashed down to the bottom of the ranks in the technical round. And this is what I like about the Bake Off, that always keeps you guessing all the way until the end. You never know who is gonna go. Just because someone's got moves doesn't mean they're gonna stay all the way to the end. A couple of people, Anthony with the epic mango and chili jammy dodgers, he crashed down to bottom place. I put it down to nerves, Anthony, seriously. I put it down to nerves, like wagon wheels, nerves. It's the first week, like I totally put it down to nerves. Don't feel bad about it. And somebody else who crashed down, which was a real shame as well, was Kim Joy. Because mm, Kim Joy had nice biscuits in the first round, then she came 10th. But you know what? I would be crumbling like a cheap paper bag at that point, trying to cover those in chocolate and stuff like that and get them just, Right, so it's cool, yeah, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. So the top of the ranks in the technical challenge, the third place, Manon, which is lovely, because she did really well in the first round. So Manon come up in third place, really good. Bryony from Bristol came in at second place, which is excellent, and the first place went to Ruby, right? Ruby the boxer came in first place. I told you I had my eye on her at the beginning. Her biscuits were dry, but she has got something, yeah? I'm telling you. It was about this point at the couch at home when I realised what it was that made Paul Hollywood look extra beautiful this year. And you know what it was? I thought maybe his skin is a little darker shade of mahogany than it normally is, but then I clocked it. He's got a full beard, like the whole beard. It's all white and beautiful. He ain't got that little goatee. He's got the whole beard. Really rounds him off. Really nice, the touch of jealousy. Next round, the show stopper, some sort of 3D biscuit selfie uh, up on an easel of, of the best moments of people's lives. And you know what? Why not? And the requirements for this round was it had to be a portrait, a self-portrait of the person in a place that they love, and it had to be comprised of layers of biscuits with fillings. Wow, we were a wide variety of biscuit self-portrait selfies there was. And you know what stood out for me? Dan stood out for me. Dan did that picture of him cuddling a baby or a prawn or whatever you want Paul Hollywood to call it. Uh, but it was pretty much immaculate in the way that it looked. That icing was spot on. He got it all finished and it looked wicked. Something else I want to mention is Terry. When I saw Terry making brandy snaps, I was like, Terry? Are you having a laugh? A brandy snap is probably the most delicate biscuit you could possibly imagine. You're gonna make a 3D picture and put on an easel? You're crackers! But when I saw him drape that brandy snap over a mold of his own face and then paint it 
What, seriously? What a genius. They were well impressed, weren't they? Ruby bit off a little bit too much than she could chew. What? In this round, which is a real shame because I think she's got a little something, yeah, but she just did too much and couldn't get it done in time, which is a real shame. She didn't get her face finished and the judges picked it up as in the point was to do your face, but she hadn't finished the face bit. Anthony brought it back after the disastrous wagon wheel round, which I was very pleased about. And John waited until right at the end of the show before he showed us what he was truly made of with his spectacular, I think it was either Paul or Prue that said spectacular sailing picture. Listen, one thing I want to mention, yeah, and it's nothing to do with the contestants whatsoever or Paul's immaculate facial hair but someone's got to get that guy a chopping board seriously nobody cuts a biscuit on a plate with a big sharp chopping knife seriously it made me wince every single time I don't know how good your tan is or how blue your eyes are you need to be chopping on a chopping board to make the viewers happy so let's go through with it if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want any spoilers this is where the spoilers are coming up. I'm about to tell you who the star baker is and who went home. And if you don't want to listen to that, I'm dr deliberately dragging out this part so that you have enough time to turn the video off before I begin ruining your day. Star Baker was a toss up between Manon and Bristol Briney. Both did exceptionally well in all three rounds. So the star baker went to Manon in the end. Well done, Manon. It's probably Manon, probably in French, but you know what? I'm an English geezer, so Manon. Nice work. And on the flip side, the person that went home, you know, we're only in week number one, and they did comment how sad it was that someone went home in week number one. And it's always sad to have someone's dream smashed in the first round. And to be honest with you, I'm going to say it out loud. I had my eyes on Rahul because I wasn't too sure that he had moves. And the person who went, that I thought was a real shame because I clocked her in the beginning and then with a paintbrush and she definitely, definitely had moves. She had the precision and stuff like this. She had it under her fingers. I clocked that paintbrush, Imelda. Imelda went home, which is a real shame. I feel like, yeah, people have bad rounds and that's part of the deal when you can go out on a bad round. But if people, if people stayed in on the skills that they possess inside of their fingertips, I think she would have stayed and somebody else would have gone. But that's why I'm not a judge on the Great British Bake Off and that's why I did not write the rule book. So there we are, season nine, episode one, already done and dusted. I love the Bake Off. I'm so pleased that it's back and I love making videos like this. Uh, thank you very much for watching and you know what if you've got your eyes on somebody if you saw something in somebody that I did not write it in the comments box underneath or write it however you like in the comments box underneath thank you very much for watching I really appreciate it take care enjoy next week it's cake week on the great British Bake Off season 9 episode 2 see you next week bye bye